Hey guys, Javier Mercedes here for a Lightroom tutorial. What am I going to do today? I am actually going to show you how to get a picture from something like this to this within Lightroom. A lot of people that I talk to think that they have to use Photoshop to edit their photos when in all honesty, Adobe created Lightroom to do all your color correcting and do the bulk of your just like if you want to make a photo look good as just a raw photo that's what Lightroom's for Photoshop's for like cutting things out and doing manipulating to the photo but Lightroom does a lot of what you need in Lightroom and it makes your life so much easier it's almost like like the sliders on Instagram like once you get used to Lightroom it's so much easier basically what I'll do on this photo is what I do on like maybe 90% of the photos that I have where there's a human in them so let's go ahead and take it to the computer and I'll show you guys right now so really right off the bat all I have to do is just go down here and drag it onto Lightroom that's gonna bring Lightroom up the photos right here for what you want to import into Lightroom go down here and you click import I'm gonna make this full screen all right so here's a photo of a selfie I feel like a lot of people will take selfies and this is a good example of a selfie right off the bat what I do in Lightroom is I'm going to take this I'm going to hit auto all right, so see what it did there? I'll just undo. And it brightened up everything underneath my brim auto. And the other thing is my crop. Make sure your crop is just original. My camera takes everything in 16 by nine because I'm normally filming with it. With auto, next, let's go to clarity and just see what we get. And that's more of a editor's choice if that's what you're into. With this one, I might just do a pinch of clarity. Then with vibrance, vibrance is what really kicks it in. And the other thing that you can do right off the bat is get your correct white balance. So you want to take this, this white balance dropper and find something that you know is white in the photo. So I'm going to go up to Sabrina's shirt here and click that. Notice how it turned the things a little bit more yellow. I don't want that. I think I want more towards that blue color. Right. Yeah, I'm really liking that color. Man, that's beautiful. So saturation, we'll bring that up and we'll just keep pumping it and pumping it. Here's a quick trick. Quick trick with Javier Mercedes in Lightroom. What you can do is just boost just smother that saturation and you see how everything that's orange is just like way too oversaturated but these blues are freaking phenomenal well you can compensate and keep those blues and like you just pummel that saturation and what you do is you go back to the saturation here this in the actual just colors of saturation and then you go to orange and you start dialing it back notice how my skin tone is now okay right here. Now I have too much red in my skin and I dial back the red to be a little bit okay. Now I'm looking at Sabrina's shoulder and her lips are a little bit too much. So let's go back on purple and magenta and see how that treats us. Looks like a little bit of yellow needs to go back too, but the rest of that looks amazing. I want to highlight our faces so what we're going to do is we're going to go right here this is a radial filter this you click on this radial filter right here and with this radial filter you want to put it around the faces and right now it's on burn darken so there's this effect thing it gives you some presets you click it and right now i want to do dodge lighten and i'm going to go to invert so it inverts the mask and i can show you I'm affecting everything inside that circle right there. So I'm going to re-hit Dodge Light and just so it goes back to it. There, now that's, that's hitting our faces, right? I'm actually going to right click, duplicate, and now do Burn Darken, which darkens the colors, but I'm going to uninvert so it's affecting everything else. So what I just did is I took everything around the face with the radial filter and I put a filter on it that lightens the face so it draws the eye towards the face with the brightness. Then I, I duplicated that filter and then switched the invert back so it's affecting everything outside the face. And then what you do is you darken that just a little bit, it, just a little bit. Let's go back to what the preset is, burn darken, and boom. Here's how it was, and then I'm gonna redo it. So now our faces are highlighted. Now, another thing I might do is I might take that same concept and I'm going to make it another radial filter right here, but I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put this radial filter on just to highlight our bodies. And that one, I will do another burn darken. So it's gonna darken everything around our bodies. Now, the cool thing is you can also start to manipulate everything else 
around that's outside the circle. So what if we wanted to take this dehaze and just see what we get when we start doing, when you start manipulating other stuff. Well, say you wanted to mess with the clarity just a smidge. And let's, let's see what happens when you do some contrast, highlights, shadows, just fool around. It's just like in, in Instagram kind of, where you start just messing with those LUTs and see what works. I'd say that's good. Next thing I'll do is I'll take another radial filter, I'll put it around the iris of the eye. Then what you wanna do is go down here, iris enhance, invert it, duplicate. And what it's doing is it's making the eyes pop. I bet you're gonna see it here on Sabrina's eyes the most. Look at how it just bring, it makes those eyes pop, duplicate right around there. Look at how it makes the eyes kind of pop out. Now sometimes I can get out of hand, so what you could do is go back to your radio filter, click it, and um, maybe bring the saturation down a little bit just so it doesn't pop out so much. Next is if there was any noise in here, you could take this luminance, and I just want to show you this effect, and just pop it really up. See, look at the forehead kind of makes it look like a painting, but where this really takes, um, I'll just show you an example here, where luminance really takes effect. So on a photo like this, let me zoom in. See all this noise right here compared to when I zoom in right here? It's not as noisy and the, just the photo looks beautiful. This photo is great, but it's just dark and just doesn't look as good. And what happens when you add luminance or noise reduction is it takes that, it takes all that noise right there and it just starts blending it together and it makes kind of a crappy photo look better. Now, this looks like that pinning effect because I really cranked the noise reduction. Let's go up here, hit auto, boom. Now see what that luminance does? Just makes everything kind of blend together. And I know everybody's going to run into this problem where you take a photo at night or something. Try adding noise reduction to it within Lightroom. If that's the only thing that you can do to that photo to make it look better, then do it. Within Lightroom, it lets you add a vignette. If you really want to manipulate it, you take the feather and you put it to zero so you know what the uh, roundness and the midpoint kind of look like. And I'm going to do something like that maybe, then I'll put the feather back and then just put back the amount. So a good rule of thumb on vignettes, just start taking it and then once you see that it's too much, you just back it off a couple and then that's probably what you want. I see that there's a buoy here and normally I wouldn't do this, but just to show you guys that this is available to you in Lightroom, watch this. So I clicked this button right here, this little... Um, brush thing and just click it. Boom. Look at that. Look at what it just did. Did you even know that orange buoy thing was there? No, because of this little tool right there. So there's two versions of it. There's heal and there's clone. So clone will directly take something and just completely clone it over there, which I don't really use that much. Heal does like a hybrid where it takes something from somewhere else and then it kind of like does this algorithm to make it look nice and blend it in. So I prefer Heal all the time. So if you don't like the thing that it, where it took it from, you could actually say I wanted to take Sabrina's eye and put it over there. That's, you could do that, but you don't want to do that. This works for simple things like, so say I could get rid of this on the face. You zoom out, no longer there. Whatever this thing is, boom. All right, so this is an example of where you would probably need to grab one where it's kind of in that slit, just so it continues that line. Done. It's the closest you're probably gonna get to my face. Next thing you can do is you can take this brush tool. This one gets a little out of hand if you let it get out of hand. You can brighten teeth. And the first thing I do is I go here with the brush tool and I take the exposure all the way down to zero just so I can see where I'm brushing. So right here I'm making my teeth really black. And I know it looks, what movie was that? Was it Patriot where he drinks the tea and it's got ink in it? Yeah, so I'm making it black here just so I can see where I'm painting. Next I'm gonna go to the preset and I'm gonna go teeth whitening. Now right off the bat you can say, Javier, that looks way super fake. Don't do that. And don't do that. What you can do is you can actually manipulate it backwards so just just do it a little bit don't don't do it all the way just do it a little bit it's not too bad 
I mean, that's nice. Okay, so now I'd say that picture is pretty good right now. There are some other things that you can do. So luminance, let's say I wanted to make our skin just a bit brighter, and it hides those reds too. See how we're popping out of the picture there by bringing up our skin tones, which is awesome. And the same can be said for the water. I can make the water really con contrast from uh, us in the forefront. But see what's happening with Sabrina's forehead? The more you do it, and also look at my ear. When I do something like that, that's what happens. So don't go too ham on luminance. But what it does when you've oversaturated something is it makes it look really nice when you bring up the skin tones. I'd say that's pretty good. Now, the one part that makes all of this the end all be all is this little button right here, this Y button. And you can see if all the work that you did was really worth it because it's an A and B comparison. Let's find out. Wow. L let me know which photo looks cooler, the one on the right or the one on the left. It's, it's gotta be, it's gotta be this one, man. So this is just how I edit photos. To recap, there's that radial filter that you can throw on the eyes just to make your, your um, the irises enhance and pop out. There's the radial filter that you can put on the faces to make them pop out. And it just takes that exposure just a little bit up. And then you want to duplicate that and then take everything around the face and just darken it just a little bit. And by doing that, it draws people's eyes into the face to your eyes. Then there's, you can use that brush to brush the teeth, <laughs> just whiten it just a little bit because if you go crazy with that, it just gets out of hand and you can tell that people like, hey, your, your teeth don't look that way in real life. The other big one is if your photo is noisy, use luminance or noise reduction. <laughs> then also don't forget about your luminance and saturation the actual just colors that you can boost and cut. To export, you just go to File, Export. This little dialog box comes up. Image Format, JPEG, Export. There you go, guys. I really hope this was helpful. I hope it was fast enough for you. I've been trying to get a much better about these tutorials and just showing you the nitty gritty of what I want to get to you so you can learn something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below on anything that you think that I could help you with inside Premiere Pro, Lightroom, Photoshop, all those nice and neat things. After Effects, uh, is there any kind of photos that you just come across in the past and you're just like, how do I, how do I make this look cooler? Or is there some sort of effect that is something that you want to try and pull off? Let me know in the comments and uh, I will try and tackle that.